there are some things in your past that has always come up in your life to keep you from going on. You need to take yourself a little piece of paper, not my envelopes. Take yourself a little piece of paper and write on there, Romans chapter 6, verse 11, I reckon myself to be dead. Now, I'm going to give you four things in this message, what you did to. All right? And this, this is going to be a part of your life. So when you see some things, you're going to say, I'm dead to that. All right? So, for example, there was a time when we went into the liquor store. And we come in there to get what we wanted. Now you're dead for that. Or you went into a bar, or you went into a club, went in, wherever you went. Now you're dead to that. And I'm going to show you it's called the world, it's called flesh, it's called sin, it's called the law. Four things you are dead to. So now because you're dead to those things, you now must reckon. See, that's why I have to teach on the mind later, because reckon is something you have to do in your mind. That's what I do when I see somebody, uh, uh, and especially I said to my guy this morning in our early class, uh, that if you're walking with your wife somewhere, there'll come a lady, come right across in the front of you, and she's just going on, you know what I mean? And you're looking, and you're looking like uh, my wife looking at you. What, you got to reckon yourself dead to that. Do you understand? Or you're going to get a backhand, right? Right. So you got to understand that's how it is. You got to count that dead to you. I'm dead to that. My body's dead to that. So if you're still lusting after a thing, guess what? It don't mean you're not saved. You're just not dead to that. So I want to give you an opportunity to put that verse down the first half. Just that part, I'm dead to this. And I'm going to give you four more things today. Let's go get our subject, Can't shall we, before I get too far. All right, now we want to go to today's message that's going to be found in Galatia. Uh, the book of Galatia, chapter 2, verse 20. And I, and I know I should have started this first. Maybe I'll do it the next service. But the Galatia, chapter number 2, because all the stuff I just got through saying I want to keep. Uh, but Galatia, chapter 2, verse 19, 20, and 21, where we're going to get our subject. From the book of Galatia, uh, chapter 2, verse 19, 20, and 21, is where we want to get our subject. When you get there, we on the screen. All right. Let's read together. For I, through the law, am dead to the law. Now, he's, I'm showing you here one place you're dead to is the law. There's another one I'm going to give you later. But why, why you got to be dead to the law? That I may live. Uh, that I may live unto God. Why people can't walk in love? Why they can't live unto God? Because they're not dead to stuff. So I'm trying to help you. See, I'm showing you how to do it. I have to learn things and then come back and tell you what I learned. Now, you can say, well, I'm not going to do that. Okay, walk in your stinky self. Walk, keep on walking your stinky stuff. Because you turn off folk, you don't know how to love them. These same people who do that, they don't know how to love. See, that's what happened. And the main reason, everything about God's salvation is so we can learn how to love. And first, you got to learn how to love God and love his word. See, God knows do we love his word by how we read it. Because when you don't love God's word, you just read it and ain't nothing there. See, that's how you have to understand. If you don't learn how to love, you don't know how to love. See, there are some nights that I don't, want to do nothing but just hold my wife in my arms. And I just say, honey, can you turn over there in my arms? I want to love her. I don't want nothing. See, that's love. See, but when you want something, that ain't love. You, you just want something. But what about just holding me in your arms, telling me you love me, and just talk, you don't want nothing. See, that's love. See, most people want God only when they want something. But what, what about spending some time in his word and you don't want nothing? See, that's what, my job is to teach you how to love. And so many times we know how to love. But love is patient. 
So when you read the word, you got to be patient. Because that's worship. That is your time with the Lord. So you don't want to be in a big hurry. You want to take your time and absorb this. That's worship. That's what God wants. He wants to teach us how to love. Even when we're with people, we got to know how to love them. Because if they see us, they're gone. But if they see Christ in us, they'll stay. So either you push people away from God or you draw them to God. That's based on the Christ that's in you. So my, my subject is found in Galatians 2.20. I'm, I'm getting ready to read now. Praise God. Verse 19, Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 19, 20 and 21. Let's read it together. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live under God. Now remember that my message today at verse 2 says, I've taught these things. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved, past tense, loved me. That's what the cross is for. He loved me and gave himself for me. Three things. Now, verse 21, I do not frustrate. See, that's what happened when God already showed you his love. Verse 20 is showing you a demonstration of grace. So if you take note, that's what verse 20. Verse 20 is saying to you, you are in the dispensation of grace. How do I know that? I'm already crucified with Christ. I'm already lived. Christ already lives in me. And also the last part, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Those three things let me know that I'm in grace. The next verse tells me so, that I do not frustrate the grace of God that I just told you. The grace of God is I'm already crucified with Christ. Christ already lives in me. Third, I already live by the faith of the Son of God. Then it said in verse 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God. If righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So I'm talking about Christ liveth in me. We have to make sure we put the ET on there because that's a continuation. Christ liveth in me. And hopefully we can make that all capital letters uh, since it's so shorter words. Christ liveth in me, Galatians 2.20. So if I had to do a revival as a minister, I have three things I can talk about in this message. A demonstration of the grace of God would be my text in verse 21. And then I go back and show you part one. The first night I'm going to teach on I'm crucified with Christ. We've already done that in our teaching on the storehouse. Then I'm going to talk about Christ liveth in me today. Then I want to hopefully get to I live by the faith of the Son of God. Not my, not my faith, but I live by the faith of the Son of God. His faith. All right. Now, now we get into the Word. All right. So what I want to do today is, say that with me, Christ liveth in me. Now, I'm going to give you a lot of Word. Uh, if you can absorb it, you've you got to get the Word when you hear, okay? Because we are... We, we, are, we have, my job is to make sure you understand this. Uh, Christ lives in me uh, because one of our songs that we did, uh, we're going to do that our next service, but I'm hoping that we can switch that with the video and do it last this time. Okay, okay. If it's possible. Okay. Because I want the people in the audience to see that. All right. Now, what I want to do today is I want to move on. Say that with me. Christ lives, Christ lives. in me. Amen. All right. So we know where he, we know where he is, but we, we want to find out when did he when did he live in me? When did he come in me? It's what we're going to search this thing. And then we're going to talk about the word seed. Now, I don't know how far we're going to get on this, but this is going to take us into a uh, some new understandings of, of God's word. So we want to go to. Uh, uh, Let's go, to, let's go first to Romans 8 and 10. Romans chapter 8 and verse 10. Because in Romans chapter 8, now everything, my message is about Christ lives in me. Now, this is an actuality. So we're going to show you how did, how did he get in you. Uh, if we understood Adam, we understand this. Everything God does in the new covenant, he's already done. So you have to understand, Jesus was already, and I'm going to get this in a moment. Somebody can find this for me and hold it for me, okay? That Christ died for us before the foundation of the world. 
So you have to understand that his death before the foundation of the world. I think it's in the book of Hebrews. I'm not sure. So we have to understand. So all Jesus came to do was to fulfill scripture. Let me say it again. Christ died already before the foundation of the world. Revelation. I heard 13. All right. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. Let, let's go there since, since that came up. Uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. I thought it would not in Hebrew, but we're going to look at it. Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 8. All right, let's go there. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8. Yes, the lamb was slain. There, that's what I needed. Thank you. Are you there? All right. I need you to say amen. Are you there? All right. I don't want to go on if you're not there, right? Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. Let's keep. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are written in the book of life. Now remember, this is not you because your, your name is not written in the book of life because my subject just told me what? Christ lives in me. And then I'm going to show you after why Christ is your life. See, I'm going to show you both. So you have to understand, if, if Christ lives in you, then Christ got to be your life. So your name cannot be in a book. So he's talking to the church of God, which is Israel, which is God's wife. All right. All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose name are not written in the book of life. Of the lamb, the life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The life of the lamb. Well, when was Christ slain from the foundation of the world? Well, you have to first know what the foundation is. The foundation is Adam. That's why when you get to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, God talked to you about foundation. See, when you read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he, Paul came and said he laid the foundation. You can look at that on your tape sometime. So the first, first man created, <clears throat> the first man created was the foundation. That's why God laid him down. And then he brought the woman out of him. That was foundation. Well, what happened after that? Cain killed Abel. So we know that was the, what, it, what God is talking about because Cain killed Abel. Well, who was Cain? The child of the devil. Who was Abel? The son of God. So when you got down to the time Jesus had to die, guess who killed Christ? The children of the devil. John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus said, you are of your father the devil. See? So if you read 1 John, it told you in 1 John that he was the child of the devil. Jesus was Abel, and that's why when he killed Abel, God gave him another son. His name is Seth. So you have to see that is the... The children of God, the children of the devil are going to kill Jesus Christ, but God going to give Adam another son. That child that killed, let's go to Genesis 3.15. First, let's go back to Genesis 3.15. I, I want to show it to you. That child was a, everything happened there it's going to act, act out when Jesus came. That's why when Jesus came, he was born of the seed of the woman. It was not the woman's seed. It said the seed of the woman. So you have to know how to read. So in Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15. On the street, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. What? Her seed is the seed of the woman. Well, the woman don't have seed. The woman have egg. The man have seed. But the woman's seed is called egg. If you look at the definition of the word seed, there's a seed of the woman and a seed of the man. But the woman's seed is called egg. The man's seed is called sperm. 
All right? So you have to know that is exactly how we were born. So that's why I, I did teachings like we were, first I said we're going to forget those things that are behind. Then we went to I was crucified with Christ. Uh, that was tape 139, uh, 134, 135. Then I went to tape 136 and 137. We were created in Christ Jesus. Well, how were we created in Christ Jesus? We were created seed. So you want to put down the Gospel of John, chapter 12, and verse 24. We were created seed. That's why John 12, 24 said, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it's going to abide alone. But if it die, it's going to bring forth much fruit. Why? Because that's who Christ is, seed. From the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 16, told you Christ is the seed. So when a person is born again, what we are doing here is making sure we put Christ in their heart. Seed form. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 19. I'm giving you all this because there's no way I can go to everything. We will never get done. So you have to take notes to get the tape. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 19. Paul says, I travel again until Christ be formed in you. So my job is to make sure, and when he said that, he said little children. He called them little children. Why? Because Christ had not been formed in them. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15. If I get a chance, I go to some of these. You can put them down. 1 Corinthians 4, 15 told you he called them. We'll go to that one. Let's do Genesis here first. We'll go to 1 Corinthians 4, 15. This is why so many people, Christ lives in them, but they show so little evidence because he's trying to get through the hull, hull, the old man. That if you will reckon him dead, Christ could be seen through you. But he can't get through because there's too much you. That's why I'm trying to show you, you got to reckon yourself dead. If you will do that, then the Christ in you can come forth in your life. Christ came forth so much in the apostle Peter life until the apostle Peter shadow overshadowed people and they were healed. Well, who healed them? Not Peter. It was the Christ in him that outgrew him. See, you got to understand something. The bush of Moses, Moses' bush that burned, but it was not consumed. It was Christ that had the glory in him. See, you have Christ is the, in Christ is the spirit of Christ, Romans 8 and 9. And when you're born again, you have the spirit of Christ in you. That's not the Holy Spirit. That's the spirit of Christ. But in Christ, in Christ is the Father and the Son because he is the express image of the Godhead bodily. When 1 Corinthians 6, 17, you are joined together with Christ. That makes you one spirit with Christ. That means whatever's in Christ can flow to you, but it can't get to you if you do not reckon yourself dead indeed to these four things I'm going to give you. You got to die. You got to be, understand you were crucified with Christ. You, if you don't let that happen in your life, everything God did for you, you got to let it happen. You got to reckon yourself to be dead to this. Live a life it, it's pleasing to God. That's how you're doing it. You have to let this mind be in you. God already gave it to you. But he got to, he not going to take, he's not going to come up in your head and boom you through and say, I want to be up there. No, you're going to have to let it happen. When God comes into your heart and, and I plant the seed in your heart, it has to be something you want it. And all you have to believe, all you, when you believe, God put the seed of God in your heart. It's no different when you go to bed with your wife or your husband. She has to let you or you raped. In the day's time, you can rape your own wife or rape your own husband. How do you do that? They didn't want you to. Okay. So God not going to rape you if you can handle that. So if you want him to put his word in your heart, 
He'll give you a new nature. Until then, you got your own. Now, God already saved you and, gave, and, and, and cleansed your heart. But if you don't get God in your heart, go back and read the teaching that God gave. The house was cleansed. The house was garnished. God did that. But a man did not receive Christ in his heart. Then what the devil does, he walks about as a roaring lion, seeking who may spend the night. Well, what he want to spend the night at? In people's hearts, in their bodies. That's why you need to receive Christ in your heart so everything else in your life can give the Lord a great big hand. I, I think you understand it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read Galatians chapter 3, and verse 15 and 16, and then I'm going to go to some things I got to get done. Okay, Galatians chapter number 3 and verse 15 again. We're going to do 15 and 16 on the screen. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 15 and 16. All right, here we go. And I would put enmity, that word enmity is hate. Genesis, I'm sorry, Genesis 3, 15. And I would put enmity between thee and the woman. How's he going to do that? He's going to do it between the devil's seed and the woman's seed. Now, we know Christ is called the woman's seed. But it's not the woman's seed, is it? It's God's seed that was put in the woman. All right, you understand that? Christ, the woman's seed, going to bruise the serpent's head. And the woman's seed going to bruise his heel. That's crucifixion. All right. Now, into the woman, verse 16, I'm going to greatly multiply thy sorrow. Now, that's Israel. And your conception. In sorrow, you're going to bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, Christ. And he shall rule over thee. All right. That's how that works. All right. You have, but you have to know what you're talking about. All right. I'm going to take you to where now? First Corinthians 4, 15. Thank you very much. That's the only one we want to go to first. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15. I gave you the other one to show you about little children. Matter of fact, I think I better take you back there too. First Corinthians chapter 4. Did I tell you about the other one, little children? Galatians 4, 19. Let's go to both of them. Let's go to First Corinthians first. First Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse number 15. 1 Corinthians 4. We're going to start with verse number 14, I think. Let me see. Uh, yeah, let's start off with verse number 4. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? All right. Verse number 14. All right. 1 Corinthians 4, 14 is what we're waiting on. All right, let's read together. I write none of these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I do what? I warn you. Now, how, how is he counting them as sons? How, know, how did he know they're sons? Because he had put the word in their heart. The person who put the word in your heart becomes your spiritual father. If I don't preach the gospel of Christ, I cannot impart grace into your heart. See, grace is also the, whole, is also the son. Christ is the grace of God. My job is to impart the grace of God into your heart. How I many understand what I just said? The grace of God is a person, but I impart into your heart as a seed, as you hear the word and you believe it. Open up your heart and receive it. If not, you, nobody can help you. But there are other preachers that don't preach the gospel of Christ. Put down 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we'll go there. There are other preachers that don't preach the gospel of Christ could end up imparting into your heart and destroy your life forever. Because what they put in your heart was not God's word. See, that's the whole problem with so many people. They've been to so many different churches. They've been raised by so many different pastors. And none of those pastors have given them the word, given them the seed. So they are religious people without a seed. You've been born of a theory. I'm trying to get you born of a principle. I'm trying to bring you to a place that your salvation is based on fact, not theory. Any religion that started by a man started by a theory. Only the gospel of Christ, Galatians 1 and 6, is based on principle. 
Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. So if you go look at these terms, a theory is what somebody thought of, sit together, and they calculated, we're going to do this and start us a church. And that's how you got in that church. So you raised up in a church that was based on theory. The gospel of Christ is based on principles. Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Truth. Principles are truth. Principle is God's knowledge. Theories is what people think you ought to do but have no proof. See, we live in a world where we see in these things happen all day and don't know what you're seeing. Most of the stuff you are seeing today has to be in those three words, theory, principle, and facts. But we don't watch the news, you know, we, we save, so we don't watch the news. But when somebody sit up and tell you how you know that's true, well, I don't have no answer. That's the theory. That's why you believe in a theory. That's why when somebody tell you that Christ, I, I ministered on to you, we were saved by the cross. That's fact. See? But people would tell you, you shall be saved. You got to repent and be saved. You got to be baptized and be saved. What are they going by? Theory. That's not fact. But since you don't know the Bible, you don't know what's fact and you don't know what's principle. You don't know what's theory. So when somebody tells you you got to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name to be saved, you know what happened? It's a good idea that somebody got from Acts chapter 2, verse 38, made themselves a, a ministry and a whole lot of folks are coming to it. And all they got is a theory. It's not a principle. Principle, you can find it in the Bible that God says this is how you can be saved. Acts chapter 2 was not written to you. And yet based, people based on a theory. You got to repent. You got to be baptized. You got to be, you got to, you got to eat communion. You got to, you got to do this here. Make sure there's no sin left. Well, if no sin left, then you are not believing the cross. Because the cross saved you from your sin. See, the cross just didn't save you and I'm saved what you saved from. The word saved means delivered. When Moses went to Egypt, they delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt by a great and mighty power. Well, how did God deliver you? He delivered you out of sin into his marvelous grace. He saved you. And yet you got people in churches who will tell you, come over here and get saved. And when you get saved, you will speak in tongues. When you get saved, hallelujah. See, that's religion. They're still trying to get you saved. See, that's why the Hebrews, they trodden on foot the Son of God. That's what people are doing. They don't want what God did. They want what man did. Because man gets the big crowd with their, with their, with their theory. When you say, I got to confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and I shall be saved, that's a theory. That is not a principle. It's nowhere in the Bible that God told you you can be saved like that. Yeah, shall be, but the save is deliverance. You shall be delivered. Well, why did Christ come? To save you. That's why he's only one savior in the Bible. But I got to tell you the truth. That's why I'm telling you today, Christ is your life. People are not waiting on Christ to return. They're waiting on Jesus. You know why? They love Jesus. Christ lived right inside of them. God put his love inside of you so you would love the Father. But you want Jesus. I want him in the flesh before he became Christ. I don't want him after he became Christ. I want him from, the, from Jesus of Nazareth. I want him born of a virgin. I want him born of... See, you don't want 
that Jesus became your sacrifice. He died on the cross so you could have Christ. And yet you still want Jesus. Because we don't know. We just go to church because it's the right thing to do. And we're going to get up out of there as soon as that man said. <laughs> because we think that's what ill is, is church. This is not the church. You the church. Religion has made this the church. That's why Pastor Crump don't baptize, and Pastor Crump don't do communion on fourth Sunday or first Sunday, and Pastor Crump don't do this here. That ain't no church. That's the point. You the church. All them things you trying to do, Christ has done. That's why I'm going to show you a word called you are complete. Write this down. Colossians 2.10. You are complete in Christ. So when somebody else come and tell you some other stuff that you got to do to be complete in Christ, that's religion. And that's what happened to Eve in the garden. They trying to seduce you. So when I read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I'm going to show it to you, verse 1. All right, we in 1 Corinthians 4. Let me do this first. Are you enjoying the word? Yeah. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and we want to go to verse 14. Let's go back there. I'm sorry. You all forgive me. I get off on. All right, 1 Corinthians 4, 14 says, I write none of these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, Yet you have not many fathers. Now watch why he say you don't have many fathers. Because I must have a Galatia 1.15 to become your father. Hold your finger right there. We'll come right back. Let's show you what he's talking about. In Galatia chapter 1. If I don't have this, I am not your father. I cannot be your father. I told you about an animal once, and I told you he's called a mule. If you're from the South, most people from the South have heard of the word mule, M-U-L-E. And a mule is twice the size, he grows twice the size of a donkey. When you put a mule and a horse together, you, you put a horse and a donkey together and let them breed, you get some mule. So that's what happens to so many people in churches. They went to a church and they passed her with a jackass. That's really what a donkey is. And he put his word in you. See, you got to see what happened. My job is to make you understand. And see, a mule is stubborn. He's a hard worker, he's stubborn, but he's not going to do what nobody tell him. Because his daddy is a jackass. Y'all understand now? All right. That's why you don't need to sit on anybody. Because if this has not happened, Galatians chapter 1 the way you know the gospel, I suppose to preach, let's start with verse 6. Paul gave us the gospel, we suppose to preach, then he gave us how to know I'm legal, how to know I qualify to preach the gospel to you. Most people never check their pastor. They just preached a trial sermon last week, and now they're my pastor. He did real good. <laughs> and the denomination sanctifies it and make, them, make him your pastor. That's what happened to me. All the people, I saw the cigarettes in their pocket when they came up there and laid hands on me and I went away in the wilderness. I ran astray in the wilderness. <laughs> That's what they call, let's lay hands on this preacher. Let's anoint this preacher. Anybody got no oil? We're going to anoint this preacher. What we're going to have this day, we got this preacher going to start his church. We're going to get together from all our denominations that we believe that's that with us, 
the Good Friday crew. And we all come in, we're going to anoint this preacher. See, I, that, I'm trying to help you. And that hand they lays on you, you smell stinky. Because there ain't no more religion. This is why they could not understand the apostle Paul was sent by God. Because who sanctified you? Which one of these Pharisees sent you? Which one of these Sadducees or scribes told you to do this? And Paul said, well, I sat at the feet of Gamal. That's who I was talking about. Oh, you, you sat under Gamal? Yeah. Verse number 11. No, we go to verse 6. I'm sorry. Wait on your screen. Galatians 1 and 6. I marvel. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that call you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. See, there is another gospel. We'll show that when we get to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse number 7 says, which is not another, but there are some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. This is the gospel we preach here. Christ's death, burial, and resurrection called the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which you have received, let him be accursed. See, I'm not just talking about it. I'm telling you what the book said. You are not going to find any other gospel in this Bible that will save you, that has saved you, but the gospel of Christ or the gospel of grace. You cannot receive the Holy Spirit in any other way. And people are trying to do that. That's why they have you to come in the back room. And while they do something, you just come on. And some have you to put the dime on your thumb. And you they keep on until you swallow something. And you got some to put you in a big ring and you till you fall out. You fall out and we're coming back tomorrow. You're going to come back and fall out tomorrow. You're going to get this. Some of y'all been in them kind of churches. Every day. You have to tarry to get it. God didn't tell you nothing. He said, open your eyes, turn them from dark to light, turn them from the power of Satan to God that they may receive. They didn't send them about no tarry in the new covenant. People still think they got to tarry for the Holy Ghost. No, when God gives you the Holy Ghost, I told you, just like a man does at a game, when he play a game, after that man won that game, that coach be running away because he know what they're going to do. They're going to take that whole bucket and dump the ice, the Kool-Aid, the everything on him. Why? Because he's a victor. He got the victory. He won. He won the biggest game of his life. So when you come to be a son of the living God, God take everything he has in grace. He poses everything in your life. That's why Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 said, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all, everything, spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. You don't have to start off a little bit at a time. You start off as, a, as, the, as born Christ. You have to grow spiritually. But you are spirit and connected to the Father with all the benefits when you are little children. He called you that because of knowledge. You grow with knowledge. So you think about how many times people go to church and they still don't know anything. Go to church all their life. Cannot turn around and tell another person how to be saved. That's just like going to college and got a degree. But it won't help nobody but you because you cannot do surgery. You got all the degrees. You still can't do surgery. People go to church all their life, don't know how to get another man saved. Because they don't know what it is to do. Say, if you're going to get somebody to say, Galatians chapter 1, let me go to work here. And verse number, verse number 9, Galatians chapter 1, verse 9. As we said, therefore, before I say to you again, if any man preach any other gospel to you than that you have received from us, Paul says, let him be a curse. Why? Do I persuade men of God? Do I seek to please men or do I, if I yet to please men, I'm not the servant of Christ? In verse number 11, I, who I want to get to, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me, watch this, is not after man. Every gospel that you hear in Michigan, 
in all the parts of the United States, all of every station you listen to, I won't call no name, preaching the gospel. If they do not preach to you the gospel of Christ for your salvation, Christ's death, burial, and resurrection to be saved, it is a word that I used earlier. It's not a principle. It's not theory. That's all it is. Somebody said, we're going to do this and start us a church. That means it started by some man. Now, when you go to any church that's not preaching the gospel of Christ, it started by a man. And a man is over it. So you have conventions, bring that money to the man. Every church started by a man. And they passed the baton to the next man, to the next man, to the next man to be over the church. And you bring your money, Reverend, if you want to be a part of this. Don't y'all get quiet on me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So if we have a convention, all pastors got to have $10,000. Well, where's it going? Going in the, in the fund. Who's owed the fund? <laughs> Who else? Because I got churches to build. You're going to come here and support my vision. And his job is to make sure anybody in the, in the church, any of these people to help him need stuff, his job is to make sure they get it. That's how it runs. That's why you have conventions. You pay the money so I can make sure other churches, because you won't pay in your own church, so we have y'all take up some money and bring it. Let me move on. But I certify you, brothers, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it from man, neither was I taught it by man. I was taught it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, this is what qualify you to not to be a jackass. Just want to make sure. Because all you're going to produce is muse. People without the spirit. See, that's what happens, man. If you sit on a purse like that, you, only, you are not going to ever have the spirit. And the spirit of God is yours if the person you sit under will preach Christ and him crucified. You will receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is free. It's a gift from God given to you when you're born of the Spirit. He's in you to teach you, to lead you, to guide you, to help you, to, to walk beside you. He's like a lawyer. He's free. But people have been told Old Testament, when you get born again, then you got to come back and get the Holy Ghost. You ain't got the Holy Ghost yet. And then they say, well, how you know? la da 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 You got it? See, the Holy Ghost is a person. See, I'm doing a teaching on that. Holy Ghost is a person. For you have not heard, I don't need no more of that. I didn't need to show where I'm going next. Galatians 4, 19 is what I want. Now watch what Paul called them. And I got to finish. I didn't finish 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We got to go back there now. Galatians chapter 4. While we're there, let's start at Galatians 3.16. Let's do that first for the tape's sake, which we already said it. I'm showing you, because I'm going to show you, hopefully the next service, how you became who you are today. Uh, remember, we're going to do first Galatians 3.16, then Galatians 4.19. All right, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16, are you there? Let's read it. Now to Abraham and to his seed. You know no word, no S on there, no seed. Well, the promise is made. He said not to seeds as of many, but to one and to thy seed, which is Christ. So Christ is who? Come on, I need you. Christ is my seed. See, don't, listen, yo, I just told you that Christ lives in me. Well, how did he get in you? Wait, hold it right there. Let's go to the Gospel of St. Luke. See, this is, this is, and I don't say this to put you down, but most people who don't know, don't know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. See, they never read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, never heard it. Every year, every, now they're probably showing you right now the Ten Commandments, but we already saw that. But who is the bush 
that was burning that would not consume. I don't know nothing about that. All I know is he talked to Moses out the bush. See, that's all you got. The bush is Christ. He's the tree. And the life is in the tree. Otherwise, the Holy Spirit, Christ, the Spirit of Christ, that's the Spirit of Christ. See, I'm going to show you that the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Christ is different. Christ is also Spirit. All right. We are in Galatians chapter 3 and verse number. Are we going to Luke, right? Yeah, Luke chapter 8. Thank you so very much. That's what I, that's what I thought. We're going to Luke. You imagine how many scriptures I probably got going on in Luke in my head right now, right? All right. But that's okay. That's why I have the Holy Spirit. All right. The Gospel of St. Luke. And Jesus, in Luke chapter 8, Jesus gave the same parable in Matthew 13 and Mark 4 and Luke 8. This is just for the tape's sake. I want you to go to verse 11. The Gospel of St. Luke chapter 8, verse 11. And I want you to read Luke chapter 8 this week, Mark chapter 4 this week, Matthew chapter 13 this week. That, that's your homework. And you got a whole week. Verse 8, read. Verse 11, Luke 8, 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. What's the seed? The word of God. So the word of God is the seed, and who is the seed? So he couldn't tell them in Matthew that the seed is Christ. But in Paul's ministry, you got the revelation of who the seed is. How many hear what I'm saying? The seed is the word of God. Well, who is the seed in Galatians 3.16. Christ is the seed. So when God birthed you at the cross, because I got to get you to accept you were crucified with Christ, because by you being crucified with Christ, you died with Christ, and you was buried with Christ, then you was risen with Christ, and I'm trying to help you to see it's when the exchange was made. Because now Christ lives in you. Well, when did it happen? Except a corn of wheat. John 12, 24. So that verse you need to have that. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it's going to abide alone. But if it dies, it's going to bring forth you. So God exchanged places with me. Let's go look at it. Where am I saying I'm going first? I'm not going to be able to go there. I gave that to you. I already left Galatians 3.16. Let's go to Galatians 4.19. Galatians 4.19. Then I want to take you to, to show you a couple of things. I gave you Romans 8 and 9 because I want to show you that. So we're going to learn about, we're going to learn about the, the Holy Spirit. We're going to learn because the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are three persons but one God. And you have to know it's the Father who gave the Son. It's the Son who gave his life so you can have the Holy Spirit. Okay? But you've got to understand each person in you has a purpose. And when we hear the term fruit of the Spirit, we take it as the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You're supposed to produce the spirit. The spirit in you is supposed to produce the fruit. Well, who is the fruit in you coming from? Christ. Christ is the tree. So the fruit is coming from, you're supposed to bring forth fruit where, where it's going to come from. See, people think it's going to ba 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 come from. No, it ain't ba 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 The Holy Ghost is to teach you some spiritual sense. That's what he in you for, to represent him as a person that we talked about two weeks ago. Some of y'all know who we are now, right? Yeah, but a, I told you two weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, that who you are from another country. You, you, ambassador, you're going to catch on one day. You ambassadors for Christ. You represent Christ wherever you go. So people know you by your love. 
how you represent Christ, you can't even love. I'm representing the, the kingdom of God. Yeah, you're right. All I see is you. See, it's not you. You represent your kingdom. All right, my little children, Galatians 4, 19, read it. My little children of whom I traveled in birth again. Why? Because he called them little children. My little children of whom I travel in birth again until Christ be what? Formed in you. And this is what I'm trying to bring you to. First, God already created you in Christ. Ephesians chapter 3, let's go there. This is how you got the seed. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 6. I can't read from 1 to 6. You've got to read all that yourself later. But this is how you got the seed. When I preach the gospel to you, that's why I keep telling you, most people don't, don't go, go to a ministry so they can get the seed. I keep saying it that way. They got to go to the jackass, and they don't never get the seed. And the seed they get is always aborted. They lose it. Because God ain't producing no more mules. mules. They, uh, he died of it. He created you a new creation. You got to find the tree of life. You got to find the man that preached the gospel of Christ so you can get the word of God in your heart, so you can get Christ formed in your life. You've been going to church all your life. You got to become the church and bring forth fruit and that your fruit may remain. Where I told you to go. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 6. Thank you very much. All right. Let's read verse 6. I can't read the rest of it. That the Gentiles, are you there? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and of the promise of the Spirit. How? In Christ. They got to first be where? So what did God put you first? He put you in Christ first. Now the other part can happen by the gospel. See, he put you in Christ. He created you already in Christ. He put you back in the Garden of Eden. He gave you a new beginning. He made you righteous again. All those things. He got rid of your sin. He did everything for you. He washed you up. He, gave, he made you, Titus chapter 3, verse 3 through 5, verse 5, there told us he made us a new generation. He, 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 he made a new generation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. We are a new creation in Christ. Now he did all of that. But you got to get now Christ in you. Because my message about Christ lives in me. So how did he live in me? God put his word, the word of God, Christ, in my heart. When I believe the gospel. See, believe means open your heart. Not to believe means you close your heart. So you cannot blame anybody when you don't are not saved unless you go into Let's go to 1 Corinthians 11. I won't say it no more. I don't want to be offensive because my wife will get me on that when I get home. You stay away from that here. I tell my wife all the time, you ain't mama. You wife. <laughs> but that's me and her know what's going on out of 55 years. We know what's going on. We help one another. We help us. All right, here's the last verse. 1 Corinthians chapter, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 11, forgive me. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to do this, we're done. Now, now Paul, 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 is, Paul is hot. Watch what he's going to say to this church. He said, would to God that you bear with me. I'm waiting on the screen. 2 Corinthians, there we go. Would to God that you bear with me a little in my folly. Indeed, bear with me. Now, he really want to say something to me. Just to tell him, look, look, listen to what I got to tell you. So you want to be over there to the other church. Listen. For I bear, I'm jealous over you. He's talking to the wife. Israel is God's wife. You are God's children. You are sons of God. All right? That's why you're in a dispensation of grace. You was not under law like your mother. Hallelujah. All right. You was under a dispensation where everything is supplied. 
You was not under the Old Testament where you had condemnation and judgment. Paul says, I'm jealous over you in verse number two with godly jealousy. And I have espoused you to one husband, Christ, that I may present you to Christ. But I fear, he's talking to the woman, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve. How did he do it? He got her to receive his words. So you got to be very careful when somebody says, come go to church with me. You got to find out, I want to ask you a question. Is your pastor a jackass? I don't mean no harm, but uh, does he have the spiritual seed in him? Do he have the revelation of Jesus Christ or does he preach religion? Does he tell me what to do to be saved or he tell me Christ saved me 2,000 years ago? I just want to know. Do you preach baptism to be saved and all this other stuff to be saved and got to eat the bread off the table? Do you do all that at your church? Yeah, I ain't going. Uh, anything else? Because that's a theory. I'm not telling you this. I've been ministering 45 years. I understand it's a theory now. It's not what I gave you in Galatians chapter 1. They can't show you that in their Bible. They can show you a scripture that they use for the, how they start their church. Like if you were in this church, you go to Acts 238. Let's go to Acts 230. That's all they got. It's a theory. Well, let's go to Romans 10, 9 and 10. It's a theory. It's not principle. Only place God told you, Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, if any man preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. He corrupting the word of truth. He corrupting the grace of the grace of God. You know what? I'm going to stop right there. We'll start on the chapter 11 next service. I don't want to go too far because we got a fellowship. Give the Lord a great big hand. I want you to stand up on your feet. We're going we're gonna to close out with 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse 1 through 4. And we're going to put it on the screen because we want everybody to read it as we close. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through verse number 4 told you how to be saved. My job is to tell you every week how you are saved. You got to learn this because if you got children and grandchildren, they come up to you, grandmama, granddaddy, how can I be saved? If you don't know, you can't say, well, just come on, go to church. And, mama, you know I can't go to church. So you got to understand, you got to know yourself. My father died in Jackson, Mississippi Hospital in a veteran hospital, and I could not help him. I could not do anything but rub his head, and I love you, Daddy. I don't know was he saved or not. I did not know how to. I pray to God a minute day that somebody came in that room before he passed and said, Charles Crump, I want to read to you 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Have you ever received Christ into your heart? Have you ever believed what God did for you? He died for your sins, Crump. He was buried in your grave, and God raised him from the dead. Will you believe him in your heart now and receive him? I believe that happened for my dad. I pray to God it did. I was 13 years old when he died. I pray that happened to my dad. But you need to know because it could happen to you and you don't know. We're done after this verse. 1 Corinthians 15, more brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you have received and where you stand, by which also you are saved, not going to be saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you unless you have believed in vain. I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins. How did he die for our sins? He was crucified. He hung on a cross. He was murdered. It wasn't, it, it wasn't pretty. But he died on that cross voluntarily, laid his life down so you can have a chance of eternal life. And yet we act like it ain't about nothing. And when it come down, you get old and gray-headed and you about to die, you're going to want somebody to come over here. Why don't you do it now? You might not make it. 
I deliver you first of all that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Christ's death, burial, and resurrection is what you have to believe to be saved. Hey, my time is up. I thank you for yours. And the door of faith is open unto you.